You know you love the Roth IRA. What is not to love about tax-free money? Every once in a while, you want some of that pre-tax money. You want to get that tax deduction. You want to know, can you have a Roth IRA? Can you have something like the SEP IRA? Can you put money into both? Well, today I am answering one of your questions and it has to do exactly with this. Can you have a SEP IRA and a Roth IRA at the same time? We're gonna find that out and a whole lot more right now. What is going on, GSC fam and Wealth Hacker Nation? It is time to make your life more. It is your always cheerful, continuing to be grateful host, Jeff Rose. And what we're doing again, because I love doing this, is I want to answer one of your reader questions. That is right before we get to that reader question. If you are interested in asking, asking me a question, a certified financial planner, and having that answered on the GFC podcast and maybe even the GFC YouTube channel, you can go on over to goodfinancialsense.com forward slash ask. And there you will see this nifty page. Yes, you'll see me smiling, giving you the good thumbs up. And you can go there and you can submit your question in the contact form there. And I will do my best to get that question answered, just like I am answering this question today. And if I'm being honest, I love answering these type of questions because these are easier to answer because I have... I have some real world experience with this question. It's one of those, I can almost answer this without thinking about it a lot, other than some of the IRS regs that might have to do with this, but I, you'll see what I mean. So this question comes from, and I'm sorry if I am pronouncing this incorrectly, but it comes from Shohad, Shahad, Shahad, uh, Shahan. S-H-O-D-H-A-N. Once again, my apologies, but this is his question. Let me get this a little bit bigger so that you can see it on the screen for those that are watching this on the YouTube channel. So here is the question. I have a question about the SEP and Roth IRA. If my employer doesn't offer any kind of retirement benefits, but I do have my own Roth from my previous employment, Rollover IRA, I am regularly contributing to my Roth. Awesome, that is good. Also, I would like to contribute to a SEP or Simple. Is it okay to contribute to each plan without penalty? Also, <laughs> quite a few also's in this one. Also, I am above the age of 50. What is the best route for me to contribute above mentioned the IRAs and not get a penalty? So as you can see, there is a lot going on here, but the cool thing is, is like there, there is options, there is flexibility. And that's what I, I, I love about investing. What I love about retirement planning, or I guess I could say financial planning is that you have different options. You have different choices. Even in this guy's case, he didn't have to do one or the other. He could do a Roth. He could do a SEP possibly. He could do a simple possibly. He could do maybe a combination of two of the three possibly. I mean, there's just a few different things. He could do none of them or one of the three. And that's one of the beautiful things is that you have choices. It really just depends on what are your goals? What are your resources? You know, what are you trying to get done? Now I've spent a lot of time, maybe too much time answering questions about the Roth IRA. I, I'm not even going to list how many different podcasts or YouTube videos that I've dedicated to the Roth a lot. That's rather a lot. Because I love the Roth IRA. Now, this one is unique because he is asking, can he have a SEP and a Roth? So that's why I was interested in tackling this one. And as I mentioned earlier, I do have some experience in this regard, uh, obviously I've had clients that had SEP IRAs, but for me personally, the SEP IRA was the first business retirement account that I had. I had the Roth, but then whenever I had you know set up my business, I went the SEP IRA first. I never did the simple, went with the SEP eventually to the solo 401k and then the self-directed 401k. That is for another episode. So let's, let's first identify or define what exactly is a SEP IRA? How does it work? Now, for those that are watching or listening, we'll have links to the blog post that I'm referencing. This actually just went live on the site relatively just uh, maybe today. Uh, and this was all inspired by Shohad for asking this question. So once again, thank you for 
asking that to prompt us to get some new content on the blog. All right, so what exactly is a SEP IRA? SEP stands for a Simplified Employee Pension Plan. Simplified Employee Pension Plan, so that is where SEP comes from. Now, interesting thing is that it's not fully a pension plan, it's kind of a hybrid. It's part IRA, part pension plan, and it works much more like a 401k in that everything that you are putting in is pre-tax, uh, this as, as a business owner, everything that you put in is coming out you know, as an expense, your contributions, whatever you're putting in, if you're putting money in on behalf of your employees, this is all going to be a business expense. Now, one of the reasons that it has simplified employee pension, so focusing on that word simplified, that's because it is relatively simple to set up. Uh, different than 401k plans. Like there's a lot of filings you have to do with the Department of Labor. You have to do a 5,500, uh, which you either have to pay somebody, I mean, a TPA, a third party administrator to take care of that for you. Uh, there's costs involved. It's just a lot more headache because it is a an, an ERISA governed plan. So that this all to do with like the workforce having employees, but with a SEP, it's simple in that it can be set up in three simple steps. One is you execute a written agreement to provide benefits to all eligible employees. And number two is you give employees certain information about the agreement, and then you set up an IRA account for each employee. Like that is it. That's all that has to get done to have a SEP. And then you have to have like certain reportings done each and every year. It's just a lot less headache, a lot less paperwork, and you can get it enforced relatively quickly as opposed to having a full-blown 401k plan. Okay, I heard that. Now the one big difference with a SEP IRA versus a 401k plan, and you have to look at this from the employer's perspective. So you're setting up a SEP IRA account, but you're, you would set up one for yourself as the business owner, and then each employee is going to have their own account as well. So as you are putting money in these SEP IRA accounts, as a business owner, I can invest into, if I wanna buy individual stocks, if I wanna buy mutual funds or ETFs, I have full discretion on what I wanna put my money into. Same thing goes with your employees. If that you are funding their SEP IRA accounts for them, then they don't have to buy what you own. They can go out and if they wanna put that into safe, short-term bond ETFs, if they wanna buy a portfolio of dividend aristocrats, it is completely on them. Each have separate accounts so that each person can invest how they want or what they are most comfortable with. Yeah! Now there's a lot of other details regarding the SEP that I could discuss, but I wanna go back to the original question. But Han said, that he has a question about the SEP and the Roth. My employer doesn't offer any kind of retirement benefits, but he has his own Roth from a roller IRA. He would like to contribute to a simple, a, a SEP or a simple. Now it sounds like his employer doesn't offer any sort of retirement account and they are not obligated to. So in his case, unless he has some sort of side hustle, side job, where he is an independent contractor, then he can't go and open a SEP or a simple IRA, which is unfortunate. Now that is why the Roth and the traditional IRAs exist, so that if your employer doesn't offer a retirement plan, you can go out and do your own, but you can't go and just open a SEP or a simple unless you are self-employed, you're a business owner, have some sort of self-employed income or revenue coming in. So that is an unfortunate downside. I do want to share this because I think this is important to know, but with the contribution limits. So with a SEP, you can contribute as a business owner, you are, are tapped out, maxed out at 25% of your net business income up to $61,000 for 2022. So this is a little bit different than like a solo 401k as an example, or even a regular 401k where you can just put in the max 401k contribution, even if you don't make 
I mean, let's say you only make like $100,000, you could put in like the 19.5, whatever, where the 401k max is. With a SEP, you can't do that. It has to be a percentage of your business income. So that is one different uh, calculation. Now, the other big difference here, and this is a big one, especially if you have employees, but with employees in a SEP, if you choose to contribute, so let's, let's use that 25% example, 25% of your income to the plan, you must also contribute, this is a big one, you must also contribute the same percentage to your employees' accounts. And this is based off of their income. So let's go real world, real example here, right? Let's say you're a business owner and you're paying yourself $100,000 and you wanna do 25%. So you're doing you know, 25% of 100,000. And so that's, that's, you're putting in 25 grand, right? Okay, awesome, great. Well, if you have one of your key employees and they're, you're paying them $50,000, well, you're going to have to contribute out of your pocket 25% of their salary, whatever you are paying them. So as a business, now it is an expense of the business. So if, if you're looking for a write-off, that is there, but you also have to put that money in. So you gotta make sure you've got the cash flow, the ability, the resources to be able to do that. If you don't, then well, <laughs> that is where you can get in trouble with the IRS. Now, in my case, when I initially set up my SEP IRA, I did not have any employees. So that wasn't really a big issue, but I have had clients where it was definitely a big difference. Now, that is why in some instances where you would want to choose a 401k over a SEP because the way that 401ks, the way that you could structure them, you can put in more towards the business owners or the key employees, as opposed with the SEP, uh, you've got to do that flat percentage. Whatever you're doing for yourself, you have to do that for every single employee. And that can add up really, really quick. And that's why some business owners will choose the 401k over the SEP. Now, the one, once again, the big upside is that the cost, the cost to set up a SEP IRA is a lot cheaper. When I set up my SEP IRA, the only fee I had to pay, I guess would have been talking to my CPA about, hey, which plan should I do? Oh yeah, let's do the SEP. Over and above that, all I had to pay was the 40 or $50 per year IRA fee that the brokerage firm that was charging me to have the IRA. So if, for example, if you had a SEP IRA and you set it up at Edward Jones or you set it up at your bank, whatever they charge you for the IRA fee, the custodial fee each year, like that's the only fee that you have to pay. Compare that to the 401k plan. I mean, it could be a couple thousand dollars just to get the plan set up. And then you will have to pay third party administrator to file what's called your 5,500 each and every year, you know, with the Department of Labor to make sure that your 401k plan is up to speed. So that's where a 401k plan is a lot more expensive, but it can give you the ability to save a lot more without having to put a lot into your employees' accounts. You still have to put some, but you won't be obligated to put in like that, say 25%. What, 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 what? All right, so we've learned a lot about the SEP IRA. Once again, I, I've done, recorded several episodes on the Roth IRA. Uh, just a quick recap. $6,000 is the maximum annual contribution that you could put in if you are under the age of 50. In Shohan's case, since he is over the age of 50, he's allowed to pit, put in up to $7,000. I should also add really quick that the SEP is the only IRA that does not allow that catch-up contribution. So it is just a flat percentage of whatever your income is. Now, going back to his question, which I think we've already answered that, where since he's not a business owner, independent contractor, he cannot do the SEP. So, I mean, he did have an original question, you know, can he have both the SEP and the Roth? In his case, technically he can't since he doesn't seem like has a business or has additional income. But what about those of you that do have a self-employed business or you're an independent contractor, 1099 IC that's making extra money on the side, can you have both a SEP and a Roth? 
The answer is yes, you can. You can. Now it does depend on the income limits. And just once again, we'll do a little quick recap. You know, with the Roth, if you are making over $214,000 as a as married filing joint, like you cannot do a Roth. You are completely banned from the Roth IRA tax-free party. If you are single, the number is 144,000. So if you're making more than that, you can't do a Roth. But can you do a SEP and a Roth? Yes, you can. Once again, you got to you got to watch these income limits, but the most that you can put in with both plans is that $61,000. So what does that mean? That means that if you made enough where you could put that 25% in to your SEP IRA, and that gets you the $55,000 contribution into that SEP, then you could do the $6,000 into the Roth on top of that, but you cannot do any more. Like the IRS caps you off total. But the kind of the cool thing is like, as, as a reminder, the SEP is, like a traditional IRA, like a 401k, in that it's all pre-tax. So if you're making, I'm just gonna throw some numbers out here, right? If you're making $155,000 per year and you're single, like if you were making that, then you would not be able to contribute to the Roth IRA because you're making more than 144,000 limit. But if you have the SEP and you put $55,000 into the SEP, and that then knocks you down to $100,000 of income, well, now you can take advantage of the Roth as well. Now, I know the 25% times 155,000 doesn't quite work out the numbers I just shared, but I just wanna give you kind of like an idea and illustration of how this could work. And that's one of the cool things. You can apply this to a SEP. You can also apply this to a tradi traditional 401k. So if you are making more than what the Roth IRA limits allow, if you have access to a 401k plan, or you can do a simple or a SEP and put money in that, all that money is pre-tax is going to lower whatever your, uh, your income is. And if that adjusted gross income now is below those IRS limits for the Roth IRA, now you can have both. And I have seen people do just that, put in enough in their pre-tax plan, usually it's a 401k, but you could also do it to a SEP. Put that in the, the pre-tax plan that knocks their income down to where now, before when they couldn't put money into a Roth, now they can. And that is, once again, that's just the things I love about financial planning in that there isn't one solution. There are many different ways that you can do it, but as you can see, it's really helpful to work with somebody that knows what the heck they're talking about and can walk you through which of these options is going to make the most sense? Shohan, I just really wanna appreciate you asking that question. And once again, I wanna apologize if I <laughs> butchered your name. I, I, I still don't think I got it right. So I apologize, but I do appreciate you submitting that question. Once again, for those that want a future question answered on an upcoming podcast, go to goodfinancialsense.com forward slash ask and there you'll find that contact form submit that question and we will get that answered on a future podcast and maybe even a blog post and a video because you know i just like to do the uh three prong approach just get you a little bit of everything right you can read it you can listen to it you can also watch it archer i hope you enjoyed this podcast if you're watching this on the youtube channel now is a good time to subscribe hit that notification bell because as always, we have more great content coming your way. As always, this is Jeff Rose reminding you that it's your money, it's your life, and only you could make it awesome. Until next time, peace.